Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to try getting some patterns in my glazes using tape. Recently, I picked up some automotive pinstriping tape, and I want to use it to try and get some patterns in my glazes on my pots. I'm going to try a couple different ways of glazing the pots using the tape. The idea will be to apply the tape, then apply the glaze, let the glaze dry, and then remove the tape. By removing the tape, I'll also remove a layer of glaze. That should give me some different patterns in my final pots. Let's try it out. Here is the tape I got. I got a variety pack. It comes in a bunch of different sizes. So this one here is the thickest down to very, very thin. The idea behind the tape is you can put it on the pot, glaze the whole pot, and then once the glaze is dry, remove the tape, which selectively removes glaze wherever the tape is. This should give us a pattern effect between where the tape was and was not in the glaze. Now the glaze is melty and runny, so I don't expect these lines to be very crisp, but I wanted to try out and see what happens. The other thing I want to do is vary the application order. I want to put different glazes on the top and bottom. Before I do that, I'm going to glaze the inside of all my pots with just a white glaze. We're going to apply the tape to the outside. This is my base glaze. I've mixed it all up. This will fire just white, so I'm going to put it into the inside of my pots. I'm going to try three different approaches. One, I'm going to glaze the outside in white as well, then apply the tape, then apply a blue glaze. The second one, I'm going to apply a blue glaze, apply the tape, and then my white glaze. The last one, I'm going to apply a tape directly to the bisquare, and then apply the blue glaze. So for this, I'm just going to dunk it. Got my blue glaze all mixed up as well. So now I'm going to do the outside of the next pot. I don't think I have enough to dunk it, so I'm going to put it in and swirl it around. And then the last one will just leave while the other two dry. Here are the three pots. I've let them sit most of the day. They were pretty damp between glazing the inside and the outside, at least of these two. One of my concerns is that the glaze, when it's dry, is pretty powdery, so I'm not sure if the tape's going to stick or not. This one should be fine since it's just the bisque square. But only one way to find out. Let's go ahead and put on some tape. So for this one, I think I'm just going to use this thin tape and put on some more or less random patterns. That seems to stick okay. It seems to be going all right so far. It's a little hard for me to do this and let you see as well, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a bunch off camera. So here is the first one. The tape seems to be sticking pretty well. Did manage to chip off a little bit of glaze, so we'll see how that goes. And I have no idea how it's gonna stick if it gets wet, but we will find out. I'll probably rub it down one more time before we put it in the glaze. So this one here is with the white on the bottom, so let's do the next one with the blue on the bottom. I think I'll do a different pattern for this one. So let's try the thinner tape. I'll start it here down where it's not going to be glazed. And same thing, I managed to break off some glaze, I guess from right here. And I'm not sure, this one feels a little bit wrinkly, so I'm not sure. I think maybe I bent the corners a little too tight. We'll find out. And this last one here I think is going to be the easiest since this is just the, the square. I think I'm going to do a pattern like the first, only maybe with this thicker tape. Maybe a little bit different. a bunch of vertical-ish stripes. All right, there is the last one. All right, first up, we'll do this one into the white glaze. 
some of this tape is lifting up, so I think we're going to miss a few spots. And I don't know that this glaze is deep enough, so let's see if we can tilt it. So we can go all the way down. Oh, the glaze is running off of the tape. That's a good sign. All right, that's it for the white glaze. Next up is the blue. I went ahead and moved it into a different container. I was running a little bit low on the other one. This will let me do displacement easier. So I'll do this one here with the white glaze on it already into the blue. It is so much easier dipping glaze into a container that's the right size or when you have enough. And the last one here, it's just the rock clay on the outside. Here they are, I'm going to let them dry for a while. In particular, I want to make sure that the part above the tape dries since the pot isn't sucking in the moisture. So I'll just need to air dry. And then we'll come back to this and pull off the tape. All right, and here are the three pots. I just pulled off all the tape. You guys weren't looking for some reason. The tape came off very easily. I just used a pair of tweezers and pulled it off or grabbed it with my fingers. This one here was the last one I did. It left the cleanest lines. I think next up was this one, although it definitely is chipping out in some places. And the last one, which is the roughest, was the one with the fine little squiggles everywhere. These are still a little bit damp, I'm not too sure that contributed to the glaze breaking or not. So I'm going to let these dry the rest of the way. And then I will probably use my finger and kind of rub out some of the like roughest edges. After that, the next stop will be the glaze firing. And in just a second, you will get to see the results. I had a successful kiln firing. One of the things I really like about pottery is the surprises you get from a glaze firing in particular. This is one of those times. So let's start with the last pot. Here it is. This is the one with the large vertical pieces of tape I put on. And I've got very crisp lines between the glaze and then the raw clay body. This one has an interesting texture to it since there is a raw clay right next to glaze. Overall, I think that is pretty successful. It does make me want to try doing this with underglaze instead of glaze. I think I can get the crisp lines that way and then have a glaze on top of it. By doing that, I would have a uniform surface finish since the whole pot would be glazed, but I think I could keep those crisp lines. So the next one I want to show is this one. So this one conceptually is somewhat similar. So it's got the blue on the outside with the white stripes. So this one is much more even since the whole pot is glazed. However, as I suspected, the uneven edges that were left by the tape with the kind of fuzzy glaze did result in these uneven lines and the glaze moved some as well as it got fired. So I like the spirit of this one, but I think the execution fell short a little bit. It was supposed to be much more like this one instead with the crisp lines. And then last but not least, the biggest surprise. It's actually this one. This is the one with the very fine tape that I put on it and pulled off. It was very jaggy and I did not have high hopes, but actually I think this one I like the most out of the whole batch. This has a couple of things I think going for it and why it turned out well. So one, I applied the tape in this very kind of random pattern. And I think the fact that the glaze kind of ripped off with unevenness actually played into that. So I just accentuated some of these lines that were a little bit uneven. This one was clearly meant to be very geometrical. This one's much more organic. So I think those two played well together. I think the other thing that worked out well is actually the order of glaze application. So this one here left the very white lines underneath versus this one left very dark blue lines underneath. And so there's less of a stark contrast between the dark blue and the lighter blue, where the lighter blue is caused by the white glaze going on top. One of the other interesting things about this pot, let's see if I can show you, they wound up with this kind of cool marbling effect on the inside. I have no idea how that actually happened. I doubt I could do it on purpose, but it's actually one of the cool things that happened on the inside of the pot. Well, one of the other things I want to mention about this pot is that there's actually a, also a really cool surface finish to this. You can feel the unevenness in the glaze that matches the different lines that are there. So that's a cool kind of additional texture to the pot, even though it's all smooth. There they are. I think that's a successful experiment. I wasn't sure if the tape would stick to the glaze, and it actually did. And with my surprise pot, I think it's worth exploring some of these more organic forms. 
and different glaze application layers. And to get these crisp lines, I think I need to move into an underglaze. So playing with underglazes and then the different masking techniques, I think is gonna be on my list of things to try. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.